Hello, good morning, class. Okay, I think it's good. Okay. 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 Hello, Sunita sir. Hello sir. Hello. I got a good idea. Hello. Hello. Okay, let's start our class. I'll be talking about peritoneum and intra-abdominal abscess. Peritoneum is a single set of simple squamous epithelium of mesodermal origin round mesothelium lying in a thin connective tissue stroma uh, lining the abdominal cavity uh, its, its surface area is approximately 1 to 1.7 meter square and that is approximately uh, total body surface area in male it is a closed type and, and that is uh, no, not communication uh, with the external environment and in female it is open type through the ostia of the fallopian tubes and this is the picture of the uh, peritoneum um, and periton uh, uh, peritoneal cavity. The red line uh, indicates the parietal peritoneum and the blue line indicates the visceral peritoneum. And the yellow color is the uh, peritoneal cavity, uh, which we'll be talking later. Peritoneum is a bidirectional. It is a semi-permeable membrane and it controls the amount of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. It promotes sequestration and removal of bacteria from the peritoneal cavity, and it facilitates the migration uh, of inflammatory cells from the microvasculature uh, into the peritoneal cavity. Uh, its type, uh, there's two types, there's parietal and visceral. Uh, as we already mentioned in previous picture, uh, this one, a red color, uh, is a parietal peritoneum, uh, which covers the anterior abdomen wall, uh, posterior abdomen wall, and inferior surface of the diaphragm and the pelvis. Uh, and similarly, now this blue color, uh, blue color line is a uh, visceral uh, peritoneum, uh, which uh, covers the most of the uh, visceral uh, organs. Parietal peritoneum is, uh, I already told it, is a, it covers anterior, lateral, and uh, posterior abdomen wall surface and inferior surface of the diaphragm and the pelvis. And uh, visceral peritoneum, it covers most of the surface of the uh, intraperitoneal organ, that is stomach, jejunum, ileum, transverse colon, liver, and spleen, and the anterior aspect of the retroperitoneal organ, that is duodenum, left and right colon, pancreas, kidney, adrenal, um, and uh, parietal peritoneum is loosely attached and easily stripped off and it is innervated by the somatic nerves so it is painful and visceral peritoneum is firmly adherent and can be stripped off it can be stripped off and it is innervated, innervated by autonomic nervous system hence and there is no pain uh, sensation uh, peritoneal cavity uh, is in the previous picture and this yellow color indicates uh, the peritoneal cavity and this is the uh, space between the parietal and visceral peritoneum this uh, space between the red color line and the blue color line that is the uh, per uh, peritoneal cavity it is the largest cavity in the body and it normally contains uh, less than 100 ml of clear serous fluid and it is divided into nine spaces by ligament and mesentries. Uh, that is the right, uh, right sophrenic, left sophrenic is uh, in uh, figure A. Um, that is right uh, sophrenic space in the uh, along the right side of the liver, and left sophrenic space along the mm, left side uh, of the liver, and subhepatic space. Um, so, and lesser sac. Lesser sac is, uh, you can uh, clearly see in uh, figure number uh, B, uh, that is the lesser sac, 
and supramesentric, inframesentric, right paracolic gutter, left paracolic gutter, and the pelvic. Uh, let's talk about the acute uh, peritonitis. Itis means inflammation. That is the uh, inflammation of the uh, peritoneum. Uh, that is peritonitis is defined as the inflammation of the parietal and visceral that is serosal layer of the peritoneum either due to chemical bile or due to bacterial infection and its uh, clinical features are abdomen pain and abdominal pain that is worse on movement coughing and deep respiration and constitutional offsets that is anorexia malaise fever lassitude and gi offsets that is nausea with or without vomiting. Uh, pyrexia, that is fever, raised pulse rate, that is tachycardia, and tenderness with or without guarding, rigidity, rebound, tenderness. Uh, uh, you already, uh, I think you already study in practical classes about the guarding, rigidity, rebound, tenderness, and pain, tender, and if it is uh, in pelvic, pelvic peritonitis, uh, we can also uh, appreciate pain and tenderness on a parietal examination and for vaginal examination. There is absent or, absent or reduced bowel sound due to the inflammation uh, and ileus of the bowel and septic shock, that is systemic inflammatory response syndrome. And, uh, also, we call it is SIRS. Uh, SIRS, uh, there is a certain criteria. Uh, for SIRS, uh, there must be uh, two at least two features of uh, among the four that is um, hyperthermia uh, in number one hyperthermia that is uh, more than uh, 38 degree uh, centigrade or hypothermia less than 36 degree centigrade or tachycardia more than 90 uh, beats per minute and tachypnea that is more than uh, 20 breath per minute and uh, leukocytosis that is uh, leukocytosis or leukopenia. Leukocytosis means more than 12,000 uh, or cubic mm and uh, leukopenia means lo less than uh, 4,000. Uh, if among these four, uh, the uh, two or at least two um, parameters is raised, then we can call it uh, SIRS. And multiple organ dysfunction syndrome in later stages and that leads to uh, ultimately death of the patient. The systemic complications of uh, peritonitis is, we already mentioned, septic shock and systemic inflammatory response syndrome, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome, and followed by death. And abdominal complications of peritonitis are paralytic ileus. This is due to the inflammations of the bowel and res um, residual or recurrent abscess, inflammatory mass, uh, portal pyemia, portal pyemia uh, uh, and liver abscess. Portal pyemia is uh, actually and the infection of liver that is followed by infection of the intestine. Uh, we already know uh, that liver is uh, supplied by 20% by the hepatic artery and 80% by the uh, portal vein. And the portal vein carries blood from the um, intestine to the liver uh, with uh, nutrients. Uh, so portal pyemia is infection uh, that uh, is uh, that goes from the uh, intestine to the liver uh, in the uh, through the uh, portal route and addition uh, additional small wall obstruction these are the complications of uh, peritonitis <clears throat> types of peritonitis uh, there is uh, primary peritonitis secondary peritonitis and tertiary peritonitis another uh, type is localized peritonitis and the generalized peritonitis. Generalized peritonitis is also divided into early and late. We'll be talking about the primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, peritonitis. In the primary peritonitis, it is 1% of all the peritonitis without, and there is no any documented source of infection. And it is usually seen in the young girls through fallopian tubes and males through the respiratory tract or otitis media. It is commonly due to the pneumococci and occasionally due to streptococci, hemophilus, gonococcus, and other gram negative organisms such as E. coli. <clears throat> it is uh, common in cirrhotic patients with ascites, is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, and is due to translocation of gut bacteria or through the mesenteric lymph lymphatics or occasionally as the blood spread. 
30% of the patients with ascites uh, in cirrhosis will develop is, uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. 90% are a monomicrobial infection. Uh, ascitic fluid protein is less than one gram per DL. Increase the risk of, uh, if ascitic fluid is less than one gram per DL, it increases the risk of uh, primary um, peritonitis, that is uh, uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. If ascitic fluid uh, WC count is more than 250 cells per cubic mm, uh, with uh, more than 50% polymorphonuclear cells that is suggestive of primary peritonitis. Uh, primary peritonitis can occur in children with nephrotic syndrome or SLE. It is uncommon after 10 years of age. It is common in malnutrition uh, child and child with nephritis. It is also seen in sites patient with indwelling catheters for peritoneal dialysis, patients with uh, peritoneal venous shunt and the usually total count is very high, that is more than 30,000 per cubic mm. Treatment of uh, primary peritonitis is diagnostic tapping and tube peritoneal drainage and laparoscopic drainage and was are useful method. Lap uh, laparotomy and peritoneal toileting can be also done and the protospectum antibiotics including combinations of aminoglycosides, cephalosporin and metronidazole is given. <clears throat> Local uh, installation of antibiotics is also practiced. In secondary uh, peritonitis, secondary uh, peritonitis is uh, usually secondary to any ball or other visceral pathology, that is perforation, uh, appendicitis. Um, uh, it is the uh, E. coli is the most common organism involved um, in secondary peritonitis. Duodenal perforations and burst appendicitis are the commonest cause. And talking about the tertiary peritonitis, it occurs after any abdominal surgeries and usually it is very severe and may go into uh, SIRS or multiple organ dysfunction syndrome early. It is defined as the um, defined as, uh, persistent or recurrent intra-abdominal infection after an adequate treatment of primary or secondary peritonitis, usually after it occurs after 48 hours. It is common in immunosuppressed individuals with infective peritoneal host defense against microbes. Uh, it is infection, uh, it is usually uh, in, due to the infection and it is virulence and resistance to drugs. It is clinically difficult to diagnose causing delay in therapy. Uh, so the mortality is more in tertiary uh, peritonitis. Uh, the investigations uh, we perform CT, uh, CT scan of abdomen, total leukocyte count, platelet count, um, liver function test, um, renal function test. Uh, we monitor the early urine output uh, and the chest X ray. Our treatment uh, treatment uh, regarding the tertiary peritonitis is aggressive antibiotic therapy, antifocal therapy, therapy and total parenteral nutrition. Uh, maintaining of hemodynamic stability, explorations of abdomen through vasus, colostomy, allostomy, or uh, exteriorization of the pole segment. Pre uh, sometimes uh, fresh frozen plasma, pack cell, platelet transfusions may be required, and sometimes ventilator uh, support, ICU care is often needed. Often bacteria are, are in multi-drug resistant, and mortality rate is more than 50%. The problems are DIC, septicemia, uremia, uh, hem hemorrhage, pneumonia, and uh, ARDS. Uh, in, gen general, in general, the management of peritonitis is uh, general care of the divided into two groups, that is general care of the patient and the surgical treatment of the cause. General care of the patient uh, is the correction of fluid and electrolyte imbalance, insertion of nasogastric drainage tube and urinary catheter. Nasogastric tube is uh, inserted to decompress uh, the bowel uh, and the urinary catheter is uh, inserted to uh, monitor the hourly urinary output and the, we, we can also use the broad spectrum antibiotic therapy in analgesia and vital system support that is ventilators maybe mm -hmm. ventilator support and in surgical care of the cause is removal of the uh, removal or divert of the cause uh, if uh, it is due to appendix, uh, we'll remove the appendix. 
it's the same. And peritoneal lab is with or without drainage. Let's uh, talk about the intraabdominal abscess. It is the well-defined collection of infected purulent material that are walled off from the rest of the peritoneal cavity by inflammatory adhesions, loops of intestine, and their masonry. The greater omentum or the other abdominal viscera. The types are intraperitoneal, that is the extra visceral, visceral, uh, and retroperitoneal. Uh, visceral, uh, we'll talk in uh, next class. And <clears throat> the clinical feature of uh, abdominal and pelvic abscess uh, its symptoms is malaise, lethargy, failure to recover from surgery as expected, and anorexia and weight loss. Uh, sweat with uh, with or without uh, rigors, abdominal and pelvic pain, uh, so, uh, symptoms from local irritations such as shoulder and tip and shoulder tip and hiccups uh, in soft phrenic abscess and in pelvic abscess uh, it is diarrhea and mucus and in upper abdominal uh, abscess that is uh, nausea and vomiting. Uh, signs are the increased temperature and pulse, uh, that is pyrexia, uh, swinging pyrexia, and, and the tachycardia, localized abdominal tenderness uh, with or without mass. Uh, let's talk about the pelvic abscess. The most common intra, it is the most common intra uh, peritoneal abscess, that is, a, it accounts for 50 to 60 percent, and collection of fos in either uh, rectovesicle or uh, rectouterine pulse, that is the pulse of Douglas, uh, as shown in the... Excuse me. Biraz, my class is not My class is not here. That is a collection of uh, either in uh, rectovesicle, and that is between rectum and bladder. Uh, it is in male and rectouterine pods, uh, that is between uh, rec rectum and the uterus, uh, that is the pods of Douglas in female. Causes are appendicitis, pelvic infection, sequelae of diffuse peritonitis, and postoperative and other abdominal causes and the bacterial infection and clinical fixture is uh, diarrhea it as it irritate in the colon and mucus discharge per rectum um, the high temperature with seals and rigor lower abdominal pain and distension frequency and burning maturation as it irritate the uh, ureter uh, and bladder uh, in rectal examination uh, so soft boggy and tender swelling in the anterior wall of the rectum. Investigations, uh, total count is raised. It USD shows a pulse in the rectovesicle or pulse of Douglas, and CT scan is to find out the size and, and extent of the abscess. The treatment of pelvic abscess, uh, in, as we already mentioned, uh, above, uh, there is uh, the pelvic abscess. It is between the rectum and urinary bladder that is in the male patient. And uh, in such uh, patient, we can drain through the anterior wall of the rectum as shown in the uh, above picture. And in the picture uh, B, uh, it is a female patient. There is a <clears throat> pelvic abscess between the rectum and the uh, uterine cavity. And we can drain it uh, from the paws of Douglas by co um, colpotomy as shown uh, in the picture, that is black arrow. That is the treatment uh, for the pelvic abscess. And occasionally, spontaneous rupture into the re rectum can occur. And in case of large abscess, laparotomy uh, might need. And uh, CT or USD guided insertion of the drain uh, per rectally or per vaginally or per cutaneously uh, can be done. And, uh, and of, of course, the antibiotic. Uh, intraperitoneal abscess. Uh, there are four uh, intraperitoneal uh, spaces uh, that is uh, in figure A, uh, 
and that is the transpose section and in figure b that is the sagittal section uh, in figure a uh, number one uh, there is the left subphrenic space and number two uh, there is the left subhepatic space or the lesser sac and number three uh, the uh, number three is the right subphrenic uh, uh, space and number four is the right subhepatic space the similarly in um, sagittal section also number one is left subphrenic number two is left subhepatic or uh, lesser sac and uh, three is right subphrenic and four is the right subhepatic <laughs> left subphrenic abscess uh, let's talk about left subphrenic abscess it is the boundaries are the it is bounded above by the diaphragm and as shown in the picture number one uh, above there is a diaphragm and behind by the left triangular ligament and left lobe of the liver gastro um, gastrosplenic omentum and anterior surface of the stomach to the right there is a falciform ligament to the left there is spleen gastrosplenic omentum and diaphragm as we can see in this picture and the cause uh, are due to the operation of the stomach tail of the pancreas spleen or splenic flexure of the colon a left uh, soft hepatic abscess uh, it is caused by uh, complications uh, complicated acute pancreatitis rarely due to perforations of the gastric ulcer right subphrenic uh, abscess lies between the right lobe of the liver and the diaphragm uh, limited posteriorly by the anterior layer of the coronary and the right triangular ligament and to the left by the falciform ligament it is caused by perfor perforating cholecystitis duodenal ulcer perforation duodenal cap blowout following gastrectomy and appendicitis right subhepatic abscess uh, it is also called rutherford morrison spots uh, it is the deepest space of uh, of the four it is the uh, deepest space uh, in the supine position uh, <clears throat> most dependent uh, in space uh, in the supine position where it is most dependent uh, in space in uh, erect position is the uh, pelvic mm, right side uh, it is bounded by the um, right lobe of the liver and diaphragm and left side by the foramen of Winslow and below by duodenum and transverse colon and front by the liver and gallbladder behind by upper part of the right kidney and diaphragm and above by liver uh, as we can see in this picture um, the fourth space is the Morrison's pores and um, Right, uh, so hepatic uh, space uh, causes are appendicitis, cholecystitis, a perforated duodenal ulcer, or following upper abdominal surgeries. <clears throat> Let's uh, um, uh, we'll be briefly talking about the retroperitoneal abscess. Uh, it is uh, due to the right uh, perinephric abscess, left perinephric abscess, swas abscess. Now it, they are due to uh, tuberculosis, trauma, or hematoma, and midline um, extraperitoneal abscess uh, in bare area of the liver due to the ruptured amoebic and pyogenic abscess of the liver. Uh, the investigations uh, in intraabdominal abscess, uh, the first one is the plain X-ray chest and abdomen to show soft tissue shadow, uh, pleural effusion, tenting of the diaphragm and collapse of the lungs. And USC confirms the diagnosis, but <clears throat> uh, CT scan is the most accurate to find out the extent and relation. Uh, total count and CRP is obviously raised. And gallium 67 or iridium 111 isotope imaging, uh, which I haven't seen in my lifetime. And antibiotics, uh, and the treatment is Antibiotic, uh, percutaneous drainage, or the open drainage. Uh, antibiotics uh, is ampicillin, metronidazole, and gentamicin, cephalosporin, usually uh, used antibiotics. And percutaneous drainage 
uh, is either USC or CT guided and catheter used for drainage are Malicot catheter, a wide foliage catheter when open drainage is done and pigtail catheter, a 16 fresh trocar catheter, some catheter, catheter and the catheter uh, is usually removed when the purpose of the uh, catheter is uh, complete. That is the post drainage uh, from tube is less than 10 ml per day or normal total count, improvement in symptoms or USG shows clearance of the abscess cavity. Then only the catheter is uh, removed. And another modality is the open drainage. Uh, when sy symptoms, um, the open drainage is uh, usually done. When uh, we, uh, when the symptoms persist beyond the antibiotics or the perpetual drainage, or the abscess increase in size, the pus is uh, thick or multi-loculated, which cannot be uh, drained by the percutaneous uh, drainage. Or <clears throat> failure of con failure or contraindications for the catheter drainage, uh, the open drainage is uh, used. And when there is the multiple abscess and the presence of foreign body, necrosis, hematoma, obstruction, or the fistula, and uh, we, uh, open, dra open drainage is needed. Uh, this is actually the treatment uh, algorithm uh, as we already talked about the treatment uh, that is the antibiotic, whether antibiotic, whether percutaneous drainage or the open drainage. Um, <clears throat> if the abscess is discovered, uh, whether it is postoperative abscess or the spontaneous abscess, in case of postoperative abscess, antibiotics, percutaneous drainage and close clinical observation. Uh, re of uh, re for clinical deteriorations or the uh, substantial clinical improvement within three to five days. Uh, if it, there is no improvement or if the abscess resolved, then start prophylaxis, post-op <coughs> prophylaxis or, to, or the treatment. If the abscess persists, we go for surgery and after that, again, we start the appropriate post-operative prophylaxis. In, in case of spontaneous abscess, if the size is less than 3 cm, not associated with uh, fis, uh, fistula, and there is no history of steroid use, and then antibiotics plus minus aspirations and clo uh, close clinical observations, the re for clinical deterioration or the substantial clinical improvement within 3 to 5 days, then if abscess results, then uh, start or optimize immunosuppressions and evaluate need for delay surgery. If the abscess persists, then we go for uh, the algorithm as described. Uh, the size of if the size of the abscess is more than three centimeter, or the fistula is present, or a patient is on a steroid, <clears throat> uh, we go for antibiotic, percutaneous drainage, and close clinical observations. Uh, re for clinical deteriorations uh, or no sub substantial clinical improvement within three to five days. If um, abscess result, uh, then start uh, or optimize immunosuppressions and re-evaluate need for delayed surgery. If abscess persists, we will go for surgery to drain or with or without bowel resection. Okay, and the intra and the visceral abscess uh, we'll be talking later is uh, uh, liver abscess, uh, kidney abscess, and this is the end of the class.